Hey guys, uh, November 23rd, 2021, and we're gonna give some uh, construction details of our pavilion number two. This is more or less the front view. So from here up to about this point, the roof is attached to the house all the way from the, from the right up down to here where it goes up just a touch the roof is attached to the pavilion number one and on this side to the other house on the left hand side okay behind here we have the um, 20 by 20 pond 15,000 gallons Here the area is more or less open and we have in the back 50 by 15, 25,000 gallon pond. So this side runs about um, 80 feet from that building up to this corner and from this corner to the other building is about 40 feet. That's what it looks like from here. There was a high point pretty close to the uh, to the house. And this is a part of an old lanai and I'll show you from the inside what it looks like. So we're going inside and we're gonna go rafter by rafter because the, the screen sorry got some water ran down the screen uh, lies on the rafters that, that run parallel to the uh, perpendicular to the front all right so the first rafter is right here so this is like an overhang, this is the last pole that holds up the roof and then we have this uh, triangle 2x4s that hold it up, two up front, another one next to the other pole and then the poles begin to line up with the, with the first rafter, okay? So this is attached with a bunch of screws and a metal plate and it's also this this piece is screwed to the to the pole and also the rafter is screwed to the pole. Okay, second post probably about uh, four feet away. Another post, third one four feet away, keeps going up. The height here is about 10 feet, maybe a little less, from the ground up. The ground is, as you can see, is gravel, but each of these posts is, uh, is uh, concreted. As you can see, there is a concrete, concrete base. So they're all concreted in, in the ground, they run about 3 feet in the ground and concreted. That's the last pole, and that pole is attached to the super gutter, construction gutter, okay? And then this is just uh, wood to hold up, to hold the, uh, the shade cloth, all right? The second rafter, we're gonna start from the end now. This is the second rafter, begins with being attached to the gutter goes up and up. This is the highest point. There is a 4x4 four four right here that holds it up. It's got a bunch of 2x4s and etc. attached to it. There is a shower filter behind this uh, plywood wall. So this plywood has no, has no stress on it. 
is just showering down, down, you'll see it later. The water is just showering down to about this level and then runs out into the, into the pond. Anyhow, this is two by four, another pole. It's also, it also goes on the ground, three feet. That's four by four in the ground, three feet. You see how it is attached. The rafter sometimes is doubled up. In some places it's tripled, two by fours. Okay. There is another four by four, but it doesn't go all the way up. So it just holds up this part. The next one, four by four, that goes all the way up to the roof is this one. Here it attached to the rafter. Okay, this is also in ground. Every four by four is in ground by three feet and concreted. So there's another one four by four that doesn't reach the top. It's in the middle between these two. This four by four goes away to the top. You can see the rafter is attached with five three inch screws, deck screws, galvanized. Okay, we we'll keep going down. The next 4x4 is right here, as I showed you before. This is, we're only in the second rafter. And then this is the first front uh, piling. Again, the rafter is attached with one, two, three, four, four screws. Then this board, a cross board is attached to the rafter also with one, two, two or three screws. And this is attached with four screws to the piling. And then this uh, piece that holds up the uh, overhang, it's got four screws attached to the rafter. And it's attached with one, two, three, four, five, six screws to the piling. It's also attached to this, to these two uh, pieces as well. Okay, so that's, that's the second rafter. The third rafter, same same thing. This is the third rafter where it begins and runs all the way to the house. Attached the same way. One, two, three, four, five, five screws. One, two, three, four, four screws, three inch galvanized screws. This is the second piling. Again, this board that runs across is attached to the rafter and also screwed to the piling with four screws. And probably one, two, two screws attach this rafter to this board. So everything is uh, built together as strong as I could do it. All right, the next, next pole is four by four right here. This is the corner of the big uh, 50 by 50, I'm sorry, 50 by 15 fish pond. So that's a four by four, runs in ground three feet. I even raised the base a little bit higher by another, another six inches. This is concrete slab now, all right? This is in concrete slab, everything is in concrete slab. The pilings are run about three to four feet in the ground and also embedded in concrete. And then there is a four inch slab everywhere here. The gravel just begins right here. From the first post on this wall. Okay, this is all overhang. This post, this post, and this post. Everything beyond them is an overhang. Okay. One, two. Well, this is one, two. This is rafter number three we're working on. All right, so this is four by four. There is another. There was another four by four that I had to remove because I extended the pond. It, it really wasn't really needed there. But this one, this point is held up by three two by fours, there's one at an angle, there is two and that's the third one so they all hold up this point right here where this pole used to be but again this was overbuilding 
Anyhow, the next strong point is the 4x4 that runs that way. We're gonna go and get at it from the other end. Okay, so this is 4x4 that goes all the way to the rafter, which is also a 4x4. The rafter is 4x4, runs all the way to that corner post of the farm. Okay, that's another 4x4. This one is not on an angle, but vertical, goes on the ground about uh, three feet even below the pond level which is about foot and a half below grade it still goes about three feet down i think it's six, 16 feet tall uh four by four all right here is how it is attached to the rafter then the rafter from the four by four turns into a two by four so this is a 4x4, a short one that holds it up to the to the former aluminum cage. So this we're entering this uh, lanai which was a which is a pool cage. So I worked in the lanai uh, pool cage members. I reinforced everything. There was wood on both sides. Every member pretty much is reinforced so it goes up goes up to the highest point the highest point has a six by six running across the whole one eye that's the highest point okay then the third rafter comes reaches that uh, another four by four right here that goes on the ground three feet Okay. This is the shower tower. As I said, the water just sh showers down evenly through the area. There is a filter below that filters the, the fish waste and then it runs back into the, into the pond. So there is no pressure on that uh, plywood wall outside. This is plywood wall inside. So anyhow, this is the other, the last pole, second to the last, and this is the last one. It's got a couple of three four by fours reinforcing the aluminum two by two from the former uh, lanai. Okay, and then it completes, runs down, and it's fastened to the super gutter on both sides. Okay. Okay, so this is rafter number three. This is rafter number four. I use, I'm using the old uh, self-mating beam from the old lanai, reinforced. Reinforced with a wood board, goes up. Then the rafter is coming down, made out of actually three three four by two is laying on the side flat and then it's gonna run down we're gonna go that way to show you how it goes down this is an aqueduct this is a uh, 60 feet by uh, about uh, three feet by about uh, two feet but there's only six inches of water in there the water is about that high that's the thickness of the uh, the depth of the water and the water is just running down that way and that's where it en enters the shower tower okay the aqueduct is fixed to m in many places but it's it's fixed to the frame it's supported okay that's rafter number four This is rafter number four. 
So it's got triple uh, two by fours, then it becomes double two by fours. And it's uh it's attached to the uh, to the cross piece right here. So this rafter is not attached to any poles but it runs between the in between the poles so that's one two this is third 10 inch piling so this rafter is in between the second and third 10 inch piling and it uh, is the in between rafter okay the fifth one two three four five the fifth rafter is the one the strong one that's attached to the pole as usual in the usual manner as I showed before attached to this this is attached to the to the pole as well okay then then comes this is 10 inch pole now is 4x4 four four, 3 feet in the ground plus the base 6 inches or so attached all around I mean not only the rafter is attached with one two three four screws then there it's also attached to the cross piece cross piece is attached to the pole as well as you can see and then the rafter is attached to the post on the other side okay and then keeps running this one is attached with one, two, three, four, four screws on the bottom. Then the rafter keeps running and meets the 4x4 four four that continues the rafter. 4x4 four four is attached to, the, to this pole. Another 4x4 four four embedded in concrete, 3 feet. This one is attached with the angles and with the screws. This is the overlap of the 2x4 and the 4x4. Four four. The overlap is almost like 6 feet long. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's like 13 screws that attach four, the 2x4 uh, rafter continuation to the 4x4. To the four four. Okay, so now we're entering the area where there is water so we cannot have any poles here so we have this uh, triangular support one two three four five screws it runs over there it's attached to the cross piece and then it's got five screws to be attached to the rafter right in the middle same on the other side, you see 4x4 four four running at an angle. We're gonna go over to the lanai again. So this is rafter number six, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No, this is five. Rafter number five from the, if you're counting from the right. and facing the front. We're back in the old lanai. Old lanai, as I said, is about foot and a half above the grade level. It's got a partial brick wall attached to the house. This is the three, three foot overhang from the house, the super gutter. Okay, so you, to get into the line, I have to step up, step over the step over the brick wall, and then I'm entering the old lanai where was a pool cage. Okay, this is rafter number five. As I showed you from there, there is another four x four attached with two metal plates to this four x four, which runs into the ground. 
three feet, concrete. So it goes all the way up to the rafter, to the four by four rafter. There are plates on both sides, those metal plates that have 20 screws. So all in all, there is like uh, 40 screws that attach the, four, the angled 4x4 to the 4x4 rafter. This is the vertical post. This is how it is attached to the rafter. Again, metal plates everywhere. The metal plate attaches the old aluminum cage to the new 4x4. Same thing on the other side. As you can see, all right, so now this 4x4 ends here and just a 4x2 continues as a rafter, kind of goes along with these two because there is this self-mating beam from the old planai that I worked into the whole structure, so they're connected together, more or less this is like one, one thick rafter, <laughs> you can probably say. Okay, so this sort of ends here. This is the highest point, six by six. So I sort of end it right here and go over and continue this as a rafter. Number five, it's reinforced with wood, two by four. Then it comes down and it is attached to the super gutter. The usual way, I just reinforce it with a couple more, with a couple more, uh, aluminum angles okay so these screws go all the way through the 2x1 and go into the super gutter there is one two three four five five screws here three here so it's eight there's one two three here and two here all right same same was here as well too it's all I tried to make it stronger. All right, so the uh, rafter number six, again, begins the same way. Reinforce here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine screws. One, two, three, four, five, and five on this side. So this is, again, runs up. This is the highest point. Everything is reinforced. And then from the highest point, it keeps running down. This is the uh, two by four laying flat. That's where it goes to where it meets. Now this four by four. Or actually, I'm sorry. Yes, I forgot, there is another rafter right here. Yeah, there is a, next one is the unsupported rafter right here. It begins right here. It doesn't come down to the, to the gutter. It's in between. So this is a strong rafter. This is a strong rafter. This is a rafter in between, just like that one was. That was uh, one, two, three, four. This is number five, was in, be in between. This is six, this is seven, also in between. So it's got no poles, the supported except for this pole, four by four. And then it doesn't have any poles all the way down. This is the weak rafter. So this is the strong rafter. Okay, the one I started showing you. I apologize for the confusion. Okay, so it's hooked up to the old, this pole is hooked up to the old aluminum structure, right here as well. All of this is reinforced and made strong, so that this column holds this wooden piece that holds up the rafter, that's attached to it with the metal plates, just like that and also with the screws. Okay, so that comes down. 
Again, this 4x4 is all the way in the ground, 3 feet, it's a 16 foot pole, 4x4. And here again, the rafter begins to be a 4x4. And that's the way it is attached to the 4x4 that runs in the ground, on both sides of course. Both sides are attached as strong as possible, okay? There is again this uh, triangle piece, 4x4, attached again with two metal plates. It runs and attach is attached to the rafter to 4x4 on both sides with like 40 screws. All right. Again, we go coming down to to show you the continuation of that rafter. Okay, so this is the weak rafter. That's the rafter in between. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is seven. Right now we're on seven. I was just showing you those two poles. Again, this this is a four by four that runs down. Then a two by four is attached over six feet, like span to it, and it runs down all the way to the end. Again, there is a angular triangular piece one two three four five screws here attached to the crossboard and then five screws on the on the other end it's also attached to this of course then there is this four by four that goes in ground this is how it is attached to the rafter on both sides with screws and uh, each of those angles, by the way, is doubled up. So there is two angles right here, two right here, two right there. And they doubled up for the thickness, for the strength. All of these uh, four by fours are connected with these uh, 50 foot long three four by twos. Okay, so this is where the 4x4 ends and the 2x4 begins, it's doubled up and then it becomes a single after this point. It's hooked up to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 10 inch pole, same fashion. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 screws. One, two, three, three screws. One, two, three, four, four screws. And then, of course, the overhang is reinforced with this angular piece over there. Next one over. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is eight. Eight rest, eight. Rafter is in between, the one in between, number eight. So it's got no pole here. It's just attached to the to the crossboard with a Simpson. Attached to the crossboard with four screws. Again attached to the crossboard with a Simpson. Doubled up. Attached to the crossboard with screws and angles. It's a two by four, doubled up, then it goes over, as you can see, and this is the one that lines up with the overhang, with the last overhang on the lanai. That's the one that runs right there. See, there is no pole. It's the weak one. 
this is just this holds up the uh, the aqueduct hooked up on both sides of course okay but this is the rafter we're talking about is right there this is the aqueduct by the way So that's that's the corner of the house or overhang so it, it runs right there it is attached to the super gutter with a bunch of plates another reinforcing 4x4s attached to the gutter again and then it goes up There's more 4x4s right here that rest on the gutter, right here, holding it up. This is the high point, it runs up, runs down, and comes down at an angle, just like this self-mating ones, self-mating aluminum goes down, so does this wood piece. Again, it's attached pretty thoroughly on both sides, with metal plates, angles, okay? These are also all reinforced. This goes all the way through here and, and through the gutter. Same here. Each point is reinforced with metal plates and screws. All right, so this is the last rafter that, uh, that still runs over the lanai on the left hand side of the lanai if you face it from uh, from the front okay so this is our last trip here we're not gonna come back here I'm gonna show you this is this was the top of the lanai aluminum uh, top reinforced with 4x4s everywhere with metal plates and large three-quarter uh, three-quarter inch screws it runs all the way from this pole all the way down there there is also this 4x4 that runs at uh, the high point is attached to and they're up Ang ang angled members right here one two for each for each high point this four by four this was an extra I thought I was gonna do this just an overhang here that's why I have so much wood angular wood here all these three pieces in each in each part but then I decided I'm not comfortable and I added added this four by fours later so that's they I don't think they were really needed the Hurricane Orm Irma, it handled just fine with this overhang. I added this after the Hurricane, just in case. This 4x4s. Otherwise, it, 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 it held up just fine. I think it would have held up just fine without them. This is all that attached on the, on the top right there. Everything is screwed to everything with at least 4 or 5 screws. 3 inch screws, 4 inch screws. Metal plates. Okay, so we're not coming back here anymore because we're done. This is just the aqueduct again. Tower, tower, aqueduct. So aqueduct is hidden behind this uh, black curtain. Okay, so we were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, so that was number eight, next one is number nine, the eight was the weak one, no support, not much support from the, from the ground up, this is, uh, one, two, three, four. This is fifth, 
fifth pole, 10 inch piling. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, fifth. Again, one, two, three, four screws. One, two, three, four, four screws. This is also reinforced with this piece. So it goes up one, two, three, four, four screws. One, two, three, four screws. This is also reinforced right here. It's attached here as usual. One, two, three, four, five. And this is also embedded in the concrete. So this goes down about four inches. So this piece is also hand up by the concrete. Okay? The cross piece is attached both to here and to here with several screws. This one is attached with one, two, three, four, five screws to the piling. Okay, so this rafter goes up. Cross member, one, two, three, four screws, three inch screws, a Simpson tie, as well as the as well as the uh, uh, just plain screws. Okay, so this is doubles up. Triples up right here. Or actually quadruples. One, two, three, four. Four two by two. Four four by twos. Or two by fours. Okay, this is the ouch. This is the uh, four by four that goes in the ground. Three and a half feet, including this uh, concrete base. One, two, three, four, five. Five screws hold up the same angular member right here that holds up the rafter. This is how the rafter is attached to this uh, four by four pole. also this odd member that used to serve a different purpose but now it runs sort of at an angle it doesn't matter okay so this is this rafter continues on out of three four by uh, two by fours and then it runs again there is a angular four by four and a straight up four by four under the uh, under the overhang so this doesn't go all the way up to the to the roof. Only this one does, the one at an angle. So this rafter attach is attached to the actually we're gonna go there probably so that I show you. We're gonna have to go there one more time. To the old Lanai area. So that I show you how the rafter is attached to the super gutter. If I can get in there, I'm not sure if I can get in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but this is that ninth rafter. Here it meets the super gutter. This is the metal plate, connects the angular 4x4. This guy. 4x4 four four runs there, and then that metal plate attaches it to the, to the rafter on both sides, like 40 screws, doubled up metal plate, and then the rest of the wood is just for the construction of the aqueduct. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, I'll point the camera down there. I don't know if you'll be able to see anything. This is how the rafter is attached to the super gutter on both sides symmetrically. Okay, and that's the way it is for all of them. So I'm not gonna climb here again because I can't reach for it. But if you really need to see it, I can climb in there with, with some effort. I need to install a put down my uh, ladder across the pond and then I can climb over 
over the pond, I mean walk on the ladder laying across the pond and then I could get to it to that point to show you better. But anyhow, uh, where were we? One, two, three, four. This is fifth fifth pole we were just looking at. So this is a rafter behind after the fifth pole, another rafter, a weak one that's not supported by poles that runs all the way down there. It's supported by that uh, cross member again. Same way as on the other side, as the previous rafter. And you can see it's doubled up. It's got a whole bunch of cross members. It's attached on both sides. To this member that runs across here. The main one that's attached to all these poles in front of the pond. Okay, and it's attached here as well. And then it runs down. Simpson runs down and that's, that's the front. Okay, so this is pole number uh, six. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, number six. Piling number six. Yeah, I forgot to say that uh, before we go to filing number six, there's a couple of uh, reinforcements, reinforcements right here. That's a 4x4. Four four. Both of them are symmetrical 4x4 four four and a 2x4 in a V. The 4x4 four four runs in the ground uh, 4 feet. And then 2x4 runs about uh, 6 to 12 inches into the slab. Okay, and they support not so much the rafters, you see, but just the, the cross, the cross members. There are no rafters attached to them per se, but there are rafters nearby. That's a rafter, that's a rafter. But this, these two just hold up the, uh, the, uh, the boards that run across. Okay, so we're going back to the pole. Piling number six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, same thing. One, two, three, four, five screws. One, two, three, four, five screws of that member. Again, this this overhang, the, the two by four that holds up the overhang runs into the slab by about six inches. One, two, three, four. You can see there is a couple more, or so seven or so screws. Again, it's got this additional cross member, just like the previous one. It's got another one. One, two, three, four, five, six screws. These two attached with one, two, one, two. I think only two screws. Yeah, these attached to that with two screws. These attached to that with one, two, also with two screws. Okay, so everything's attached to everything. This one is attached to the piling with four screws. All right. And then this cross member that reinforces the the overhang holding up two by four it's attached with one two three four screws to the rafter all right so that rafter runs over the next support point is this uh two by four i'm sorry four by four three feet in the ground again the raised raised base this is how they attach, the rafter is attached to the, uh, to the post. Same idea here, one, two, three, four, five, five, three inch screws. Hold up this triangular piece. 
that's attached to here, to there, and then with uh, seven screws or so, it's attached to the tripled up, tripled rafter, where I have the the longest span between the super gutter and this first pole. I triple two by four, so it's triple, 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 triple. Triple, 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 and triple. So the longest span has triple two by fours. And they're screwed together every feet, every foot by, uh, by two screws. Okay, so we were here. We were here. All right, and then it runs down and attaches to the super gutter. All right, it's also attached to the aqueduct. An aqueduct rests on those vertical, angular, um, slight, slightly off, off vertical posts on the pond. And the pond has poles that go down uh, three feet in the ground, four by fours. You don't see them because they cut right by this board. The white board lays on top, there's another, six by one and then between two six by one is the rubber so there is two six by ones that lay on top of the four by fours each i mean uh each uh four foot and then this these poles are attached to it except for those two those two go all the way to the ground and they're embedded three feet in the ground but they're under the the vertical ones, but they're under the uh, overhang, so they don't go up. They don't go up. Only the angular ones go up all the way to the rafters. Okay. The next rafter is the what I call the weak one. That's not supported by any vertical post too much. Again, it runs here. There's a Simpson. It's attached to this vertical pole, but this vertical pole doesn't go into the slab. It's only attached to the slab. Okay, so this is a 2x4 that holds it up right here. There's a one, two, three, three screws or four screws. One, two, one, four screws. Four, four screws that attach it to the rafter. This piece is, is attached to, to the post and to the cross member that runs across. Okay, this is makeshift metal plates made of what I could find. One, two, three, four, five. Five screws attach this cross piece to the rafter. The rafter begins to be doubled up right here. As I said, this is what I would consider a non a weak rafter. It's attached to to here in here in the same fashion, all around. Then it goes over. It's tripled up, and to the super gutter. The next raft rafter is the strong one. Again, the same construction. I mean, I don't have to go over this again and again. One, two, three, four screws. Two screws attach this to this member to that member. This member is attached to the piling, of course. This reinforcing member is attached to the rafter and to the uh, overhang holding to the two by four that holds up of the overhang in the same fashion. So this is piling number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is piling number seven, okay? So the rafter runs over. There is another two by four that's in between the rafters that's fastened to the slab, slab that doesn't go into the slab. It's just fastened to it. And it holds up this cross member right here. So the next over is this four by four in the ground three feet we got this cross member that's 
attached with a couple of plates and uh, and the little piece of the another uh, two by four so that, that's what hold, attaches it to the four by four and then one two three four four screws to attach it to the rafter the four the four by four pole post is attached to the rafter as you can see in this fashion one two three four screws then this cross member is attached to it and also attached to that with one two three four five six screws because it's doubled up begins to be doubled up there is another this cross member has got two of this right one and two so everything is whenever there is a whenever there is a member that's attached to the to anything that's thick I have I attach it on both sides so that it's double strong and there is no no play no movement okay this is how the rafter is attached on this side to this 4x4 with metal plate and like looks like 15 screws so it's doubled up now it begins to be tripled up this is the next 4x4 so this is piling number seven four by four four by four both of them in the ground three feet again this angular piece this is how this four by four is attached to the rafter with plates doubled up plate angles and also is attached to the cross members number one number two which are attached to the uh, 4x4 with a big uh, looks like a 3 8 or half inch um, 10 inch long uh, bolt okay same thing here everything's attached to everything this is attached to that one two three, three screws this is attached to, to the rafter with one, two, three, four, five, five screws. Now the rafter begins to be tripled up. It's attached with 10 screws to this two by 10 or two by 12 in the middle. And it goes on to the aqueduct and then it's attached to the super gutter, as I showed before. Okay, so this is the strong rafter. After the seventh piling, there is a weak rafter. Again, I'm not going to repeat it. It begins, Simpson, attached to the cross members. Doubled up, one, two, three, four, five, six, six screws, six three inch screws. Doubled up, attached to this cross member. To make it strong, stronger, I inserted the pieces of pieces of four by four in between right here, everywhere where the rafter is attached. You see. In, in addition to this, uh, two four by four, two by fours. I re I reinforced it everywhere where the rafter meets these two by fours with another one in between with a four by four insert it in between to make it extra strong it's just screw it in with a bunch of screws on all sides okay we were right here so again it's tripled up runs to the aqueduct and then it's got this uh, angular piece right there that runs from the main pole that goes up goes down three feet in the ground but doesn't go up to the to the top because it's an overhang three feet overhang of the house so it, it begins three feet out from the from the wall the construction begins with a super gutter attached to this rafter and also this uh, angular uh, four by four attached to the rafter as well and the same the same rafter over the same thing okay another strong rafter this is pole number piling number one two three four five six seven eight this is piling number eight 
again I, I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again but it's all the same construction one two three four screws one two three three screws attach this four by four to this four by four one two three four five six screws there's probably four screws on the other side that attach this to that one two three four screws here this is the outer wall one two three four five six seven seven screws here this two by four goes six uh, three uh, six inches into the slab and the piling goes three or four feet four it goes three feet into the ground with the concrete base and then there's an uh, here it's extra thick it's about six inches of the concrete slab so this embedders is this one's embedded pretty good all right so this all the same thing one four screws two screws there's one right here one right here so that's how these two are attached one two three four four screws here to hold up the rafter that's cross member pulls up this rafter then it rafter meets a four by four that's embedded in concrete three feet in the ground this is how it's attached on all four sides plate number one plate number two makeshift plate number three with a bunch of screws plate number four so that's how this rafter rests on this 4x4. Okay, another one angular member. So this is a fourth one. That's so one, two, three, four. Okay, that's a fourth member of similar uh, similar placement. One, two, three, four, five screws. One, two, three, four screws. This is the rafter. The rafter is doubled up already. All the way, almost all the way from there. So it's two, two by two, two by fours running together. Then it becomes to be tripled up right here. It's attached. This pole, we just spoke about this uh, four by four post. This 4x4 post is also attached on all four sides with a bunch of plates. Plate 1, 2, 3, 4. On all four sides, not counting the screws. I mean, there are screws that attach this piece straight to this pole in the middle. Okay? So it's tripled up goes back to double and then again to triple again this is the third pole so on the eighth piling there is one two three third pole this is the other corner of the 50 by 15 uh, pond so we started at the first um, over there a long time ago at the corner this is the other corner again this is the four by four goes in the ground three feet and in the concrete in other foot so it's four foot down it's attached to a bunch of metal plates and as well as uh, screws to the rafter or rafters attached to the pole rather okay it's attached to the cross member just like that there is another angular piece just like it was there so there are angular pieces at each at each strong rafter so wherever there is a pole there is an angular piece one two three four five six this is the end okay so there are six of those uh, angular pieces that form a triangle between the rafter and, and each of these 4x4s. Okay, then it's 
attached to the rafter over there. And again, it's tripled up. It runs to the Here it is. This is how it is attached to the cross piece with two barrel plates. Looks like 20 screws on both sides. It is a metal plate with 10 screws. Whether well, it is overlap, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. I mean, you see each six inches to a foot. They are Overla the overlapping two by fours are attached to each other. Okay, this is the cross member, comes in here, holds up the rafter, and this uh, two by uh, two by twelve, it runs in the middle. This is the last cross piece, two by four that runs all the way. But anyhow, we're looking at this rafter. Here is the 4x4, that guy runs from that 4x4 all the way to here, attached on both sides with metal plates. Okay. On both sides with metal plates. Alright, after this uh, it attaches to the super gutter in the usual manner on both sides. This is the beginning of the aqueduct or the pumps from below. Pump the water in here. And it runs 60 feet over there. Again, this ob these members are attached with two plates and there is another plate on the bottom just like that that attaches it that runs in the front. Same thing there. As I said, these posts one, two, three, four. Over there, they don't run to the to the top because the roof begins over there only. Okay. And this these four by fours support the aqueduct. The aqueduct also rests on these uh, four by fours that are at an angle, right here. All right. That's one of the. 12 inch pilings in the back. Okay, the last rafter is attached right here. The last rafter um, above the, uh, the pond. All right, doubled up. It's attached to this piling with thick plates and with screws. This two by 12, 60 feet long starts right here attached with a with this contraption here all right so that that piling then runs to this uh, 4x4 this is 12 12 inch piling then a 4x4 goes on ground three feet in the slab okay this is how it is attached to the cross member. Alright, it runs down, then it continues here in kind of a sloppy fashion. But these are connected together. After that, it's it's the unsupported rafter that uh, that's supported by the by the angular pieces from the neighboring uh, from the neighboring uh, po posts. So two here, one there, one two here, one two here. There's another rafter that begins, I mean there's the same rafter on the other side of the 12 inch piling, the first piling. This is the door to the first pavilion. So it is, these are pilings on the back 
that go down in about six feet in the ground from the construction of the first pavilion. So there's the other rafter attached with uh, five screws that runs down and joins the same 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 spot here and then it all turns into this unsupported rafter that runs over there all right so this is uh, one two three four five six seven eight this is piling number eight this is piling number nine right here this is the unsupported rafter we were just talking about supported by the V's on both sides okay so here we begin with the, the construction of the 20 by 20 pond is uh, concrete cinder blocks there are 8 foot timbers from here down there there is 8 foot stuck in each hole of each cinder block with concrete inside okay so this is this is really strong construction so we're this rafter is supported as before screws 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 cross member attached to the piling to the rafter this rafter is supported by this 2x4 attached to the to the timbers of the pond there's another one same thing attached to the pot to the pond here is a timber outside eight foot that runs and attached it, it is attached to the to the pond and also holds up the rafter that's the second one same thing It's the third one. Same thing. And that's that's the piling in the back. Okay. The next one is red slab that begins right here. It is attached to the aluminum uh, cage of the main pavilion. And it's attached to this pole, two by post two by four. That's part of the. That's part of the uh, pond construction. So is this member across? It goes over there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, five, five screws, it's also attached here and here. And then the next one is this pop, this post attached to the, uh, to the two cross members that hold the pond together in addition to, to the members to the timbers that are stuck in the center, center blocks okay it's attached like this on both sides with metal plates and here it's one two three four four screws two screws attach the pole to the cross member this is a doubled up rafter it runs over there. There is another angular piece which runs to the other side of the pond. There is one long one and one shorter one. They both attach the same way. A straight screw to the rafter. Okay. And then it uh, runs out the other the other way. And just since I'm inside, I'm gonna just show what it looks like in here. That's the next rafter over. 
another 2x4 it's just screwed with uh, six screws on the bottom one two three four six screws at the top then again the uh, the member the long member at an angle the short member at an angle they both two by four they all support the rafter this is the centerpiece right above the 20 by 20 pond same idea here the cross member five screws comes down and it's attached to the timbers and to the pond then there is a vertical two by four that holds up the rafter right here attached with one two three four five six screws all right and then it's also attached to the second, to the third piling. One, two, three. Third piling in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven screws. And then this member is attached to the cross member as well. Also, the back side is kind of high. It's about four feet above the ground. So the back side of the pond is filled about four feet above the ground, okay? So this is the, the wall height and it's all filled in the back. So there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, five pilings in the back of the 20 by 20 pond area. One, two, three, four and five, okay? These are 25 feet tall, like telephone poles. All right. The next rafter is done the same way. The 4x2 vertical, the 4x2 angular. The 4x2 vertical in the middle the 4x2 angular long, the 4x2 angular short, and another 4x2 angular short. All of it is attached to the pond timbers. Okay, next one, next one, they're all done the same way. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight eight vertical supports right here in the middle of the pond we have one vertical two vertical three vertical supports right here and one two three four five five angular supports here we have another vertical support one two three just like symmetrical on the other side and then one two three four five long ones long angular supports one two three four five six short supports and a couple extra here and there that i felt like adding okay so this is the This is the side of the pond uh, that's close to the pavilion, the back side of the pond. Okay, how many two by fours we have in the back? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, these are attached right, right to the pond structure. 
So this is all very strong. The bone structure is these are 8 inch bolts, uh, screws, 5 sixteenths. The top is screwed into every, every one, every one of those uh, timbers. They're screwed together, and there is a six by one on each side, on both sides. The six by ones that uh, hold them together. This is, I'm talking about the pond construction. Okay. All right. So this is where the pond area meets the brick wall. So for the brick wall, we have uh, the short pieces, two by fours, are attached with a two or three Tapcon anchors. And then of course the, uh, the rafters are still attached both to the big pilings and to the aluminum pool cage and then you can see the metal plate that attaches this cross member to the brick wall so then this 2x4 runs it is attached to the via these little pieces attached to the brick wall there's another little piece one two three four five of them all right, and then it continues on, just bracing the perimeter. Again, the vertical pieces. And to them are the horizontal pieces attached. One, two, one, two, three, four. There's probably four tap cons in there. All right. And then the tarp is attached to the super gutter on the other this is the other building the studio the set the building on the left all right so that rafter say this rafter for example it starts right here attached to the brick wall via this two by four and then it runs down there supported by this vertical Two by four by this vertical two by four and it's supported by this cross member and then eventually it supported again by the brick wall by this board that run along the brick brick wall using these shorter pieces that are attached with three tapcon screws attached to the brick wall okay looks like about every uh, two to three feet there is another four by four right here that's on the right next to the right next to the wall it's on my uh, blueprint all the connections have metal plates with a whole bunch of uh, screws so that they never move very strong I mean that's if I can just screw them together straight I just uh, use metal plates and then I use like what one two three every two and a half feet I use another short piece to tie this together to make everything stronger one two three four five six one two one two three one two three one two to hook this together that's the way it is in the back right here what is this uh, 2 by 4 that goes in the ground by the way this 4 by 4 goes in the ground 3 feet it is concreted it's too deep to show you but you're gonna have to believe me it's concreted in this is concreted in okay this is the last piling on the left same fashion the overhead overhead overhang holding a 2x4 
this is one of the rafters it's coming down there is a V there is an angular piece long angular piece short everything's attached to everything where they meet one two three four screws and this this is attached to the top of the uh, pond construction with two big two thick pieces okay there is a two by four in the ground at the very end all right these are attached as best as I could with metal plate with big screw and a couple of smaller screws I'm at the very left corner right now of the whole construction okay one two three four five screws one two three four five screws the cross member is attached very strongly with the screws and the plates everywhere where they meet there's a screw here there's a screw here so two screws are holding this connection one two three four screws here one two three four five screws here okay the next rafter got screws got a plate this is this second uh, piling from the left so this is building number two it's the second piling from the left there are huge pilings looks like 12 or maybe 14 inch diameter again the uh, the overhang hold holding piece this this piling is attached to the to the pond wood again same fashion this one has three supports one two three they're all tied to the rafter that runs all the way to the back to that other piling in the back okay now the rafter I was showing all of this from the inside so I'm not going to repeat myself this is the third piling from the from the left one two three overhang ho holding two by four it's got two big screws right here five sixteenths uh, probably six inches one two three four one two three four one two again this is all hooked up to the to the pond timbers all right all these extra little little members they hook up the piling to the pond one two three one two three four five they hook up this angular piece they hook even to that that's what this crew is doing these are connected for uh, for strength with this little piece both of this the, the short and the long angle angular supports are connected same here the short and the long are supported uh, connected together make them stronger all right okay one two three this is fourth piling from the left again it's hooked up with these two pieces to the uh, to the top of the pond construction it's got a short angle long support angular support okay everything else is the same and here we are back at the at the uh, V's that uh, that run to the to the door to the entrance over there. That's where we were before. Wherever I felt it was it was uh, weak and uh, two pieces are close to each other. I I reinforced them with with the wood and the bolt. 
So that's pretty much it. I think that com concludes our uh, presentation, so to speak. Okay? Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. That's the way those uh, angular members are attached to the both sides to the uh, to the pond top what else I think I've covered everything more or less give or take Thank you again.